Okay, this will be part two of the Practice Amp Leslie build, and, um, and we're going to talk about the 3D printed parts that are used in the project today. Where should we start? Let's start. Let's start with what the motor mount. What's going to hold the uh, stepper motor? I'm going to move the camera here so we can see uh, my computer screen. I have a link to this Thingiverse page where I have the uh, files that would include the housing that the motor goes into. This bottom bracket gets glued onto the housing. This uh, this is uh, the second piece. If it, by printing it uh, the way I have it laid out, you can print the part with no uh, supports and save a lot of plastic and save a lot of time. So anyway, this one piece gets glued onto there. The motor just gets shoved in. You're going to have to come up with some uh, screws to screw it in. They're going to be metric because that's the way stepper motors are. Just route the wires out one of the holes. Uh, when I go to mount this thing inside the box, which we'll cover in the next part probably, I put some um, foam rubber. It's uh, like door or window gasket weather stripping type rubber. This is just something I had laying around. And even for a more added sound reduction, any of the stepper noise getting transferred to the case. I had some small rubber grommets that uh, came with some servos. In fact, these screws as well for mounting, you know, radio control servos. And I just popped them in the mounting holes. And if I, if I didn't have those, I probably would have just taken some more foam um, gasket material, put it on the top side and poked a small screw through both pieces of foam and it just anchors it in place. You don't have to tighten the screws down all the way or anything like that. We're just trying to keep the motor in place in the cabinet, which you'll see in the next build, and at the same time isolate any stepper noise that's going to be coming from the motor. And um, so let's see. I don't think we need a Thingiverse page here anymore. The files are, are all on there. Uh, the, the files that are on there also include the remote box in case you want to build it which prints flat this way no supports there's a back cover piece which in the end can get screwed on with a couple of small number two screws around the edge and then again so there wouldn't be any uh, requirement for supports a separate piece if you want it can be glued on there to say the standby slow and fast I mean the the LEDs and marking isn't really necessary, but it's kind of a nice effect to have. There'll be a separate video on the build of the remote switch for those that want to build that. I'll wire one up and we'll do all that. So also included in this file is the large pulley which fits right onto the uh, slot of the stepper motor and gets pushed down all the way like that. There should be some shafts sticking out the top once you're done. The uh, also included um, are two more parts. Let's see, I've got them both on here. There's this little ring piece and this black piece. And that uh, black piece is for spacing the two bearings out so you can tighten a nut here and tighten a nut here and hold them in a particular position. This is going to be used in the end to, uh, well, let's take a look at another picture on the screen. I think I can make this clear if we look at some CAD files. So let's, uh, let's get rid of this and let's hunt for maybe, um, let's start with here. This is the file for the spinner. It's up on the Thingiverse as well. And I'm going to show you a picture of this cut. So let's look for that. I think it's here. I'm going to blow away this half of it so we can just see one half. Delete. Let's take this half and let's uh, move it on platform center. Get rid of this and rotate it. Okay, so what we're looking at now 
is the spinner unit, which sits inside the Leslie like this, cut in half. So this is the pulley down on the bottom. Here's where the bearings slide up. Now you can see these different tapers. I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer. Here are the bearing parts. So this would slide up and this bearing would reach this notch here and couldn't go any further. Then this larger area is to accommodate the nut, which is going to be on there, tightened on top of the bearing. And then there's another little place in case there was any part of the bolt sticking up, it would have to place to go to drag. So this whole assembly would slide up until it hits right there and it can't go in any further. And like I said before, once it's in there, this piece doesn't have to be used, but you could put some glue on this and push it up behind the bearing and glue it in there. And then your bearing mechanism is uh, trapped within there, so you have a trapped piece. But I don't even have this part glued on on the one that I built that I demoed. It didn't seem necessary because I don't plan on running the Leslie upside down. But um, these are uh, fidget spinner bearings. And this is a uh, 5 16 uh, bolt that's five and a half inches long here in America. Of course, if you're uh, somewhere else in the world, you can get a proper sized bolt that's metric. Because here, if you want the bearings to fit really snug on there and center up right, you actually have to put a little, little bit of black electrical tape around the, the threaded area so the bearing would really center up nice on there. There's, um, I think I've got... Let's uh, get rid of this picture. Save changes. No, thank you. And I think we're done looking at you for the moment. What I want to look for now. I'm not interested in that. Let's go to downloads, 3D stuff, Leslie builds. What I'm looking for now is I think I have a picture maybe of the... No, I don't. I was hope. Well, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here we go. Here we go. So this gives the uh, the bearing information. The inside diameter was eight millimeter. That's what. So I guess if you're somewhere else in the world, you're going to be looking for an eight millimeter bolt. And uh, your outside diameter doesn't matter to you, but I needed that information when I when I designed this so that it could fit in there nicely and the outside so the main thing was showing the inside part but it's a 608 bearing fidget spinner bearing you you don't want the ones that are sealed and greased there will be way too much friction you want the ones that spin super free and in fact before I put everything together I'll put some drops of light grade uh, oil like 3-in-1 or sewing machine oil or something on there just to make sure they're lubricated but still spin really free and quiet Okay, I don't think we need that anymore, or that. What other pictures have I got here I was going to show you? Um, I guess the only picture I had here was showing the position that the, uh, that the foot switch parts get printed in. Obviously all flat, the three parts, so no supports are required when uh, printing them. Now, let's pull back a little. Let's go back to our parts we have right right here. So this was the prototype spinner, the first one that I made. And I, I knew I was going to need to work on the balance part of it, but I didn't know what, and I knew I was going to need to work on the right bearing size and everything. So that's why in this one it's separate. On, this, on the final file that you get on Thingiverse, this... Uh, uh, bearing pulley is part of the build. This thing prints this way on your printer and again with no supports because that's at a 45 degree angle and your machine should be able to handle that if it's working properly. The only place you may get a little bit of rag and tag is going to be up in here. That ends up being on the bottom. It doesn't make any difference at all. Now these holes I ended up just grinding into this prototype one with a Dremel when I was trying to work out the balancing. And to work out the balancing I ended up putting the bearings in there and I would release it. Until I added those holes, that was the heaviest part and this thing would always swing and, and go down like that and stay there. 
So I came back into it and started grinding out to figure out how much material would have to be removed to balance this uh, spinning drum up. So the final file has much neater looking holes. This bearing part is all one part of it. Um, to do the drive belt, I didn't want any sound transmission between the stepper motor and this because this thing makes an excellent speaker. It picks up any sort of vibration from that stepper motor and it just amplifies it. So initially when I was working with this I actually just took some TPU which is a flexible filament that we use in our 3D printers and cut a piece and melted the two ends together and I made a belt out of the TPU and that worked fine except the TPU does transmit a lot of the uh, stepper noise from the stepper motor back to here and made it louder. So then I decided why don't I just go get some elastic thread and you can get it all different diameters. This one is what? This is about 2.7 millimeter diameter thick. Yeah, it comes in all kinds of different colors and for a little bit of money you'd have enough uh, uh, elastic cord which is very elastic and yet large. You could probably make about 50 of these things if you wanted to. Now the easiest way to join the two um, once you're assembling, I'm going to step back just a little bit here. Once you're assembling this, of course, you have to make sure that wherever you bolt the motor, it's not going to hit the corner of this basket as it's spinning. So it's got to be far enough away that it doesn't hit. And the only other thing you got to make sure is that the two pulleys are lined up, you know, at the same height. You don't want one down and one up because the belt's not going to want to track or one like that is not going to want to track. So that's why the... Uh, the bolt mechanism and the bearing and all this stuff is adjustable so that you can adjust the position of these bearings to get the two pulleys lined into the same height so that they track well. Once you get all that just kind of sitting in the base of your Leslie that you're building, you can take some of this elastic thread and thread it around both pulleys and bring them back up to about where they touch and cut it. Now the next part is easy as done with two people because you're going to take those two ends that you just cut and overlap them just a little bit and then have the other person as you're holding those in place take some uh, black thread or, or twine or whatever you've got and make a noose you know and start wrapping them together and pull them in nice and tight and then the one place that the two little knots that you tie the granny knot or whatever kind of fancy knot you can do you can take some super glue and just super glue that and it'll never come apart and because it's a cloth and rubber and stretchy it doesn't transmit any sound at all it doesn't slip it doesn't need to be particularly tight it's really easy to do so that was the best way to make a belt in this application I think I think that just about covers all we need to talk about on the 3d printed parts uh, in the next video, I'll talk about the, the wood construction of the, the frame, the box, and that will touch back again on mounting these parts, so we can cover that again at that point.